Hello everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Now from the pages of True Detective Mysteries, we take the true inside story, Love Frenzied Killer, Horror in a Hospital War, as told personally by John Sheridan Williams, former Deputy Sheriff of Pima County, Arizona. Our story begins at St. Mary's Hospital where the Good Sisters of Charity minister to the sick there on the edge of the desert near Tucson, Arizona. Over the portico, a cross points serenely skyward. On the morning of August 13, 1932, the soft tolling of the chapel bells drifts out with a devout murmur of the nuns at prayer, like a cool benediction across the parched cactus and the feet of the desert. Oh, Lord, deliver us from all evil. Oh, Lord, deliver us. From all sin, O oh, Lord, deliver us. From thy wrath, O oh, Lord, Lord, deliver us. From sudden and unprovided death, O oh, Lord, deliver us. From anger, hatred, and ill will, O oh, Lord, Lord, deliver us. From everlasting death, O oh, Lord, deliver us. Get you. Get you, Antonio. Yes, my child. Get you. Tom Salmon, the patient in room 114 has been murdered. Murdered? Yes, oh, shot. Yes. Shot twice. May God have mercy on his soul. Nurse, call the sheriff's office at once. I shall be in room 114. Yes, sir. Through the mercy of thy holy incarnation, O oh, Lord, Lord, deliver us. Have these sheets been disturbed in any way? 
No, sir, they're just as I made up the bed when I gave Tom. I mean, Mr. Salmon. It's just at 8 o'clock. Hmm. Did you see him after 8 o'clock? Yes, just a little while ago. I dressed his hands. That was around 9.30. Cover him up again, sir. Yes, sir. Well, from the looks of the bed, there's a struggle. You got that, Farrar? Right. Did Simon have any visitors this morning, Sister Antonia? I asked Sister Angela. She was on the switchboard and was very busy. She seemed to recall a man. Short, dark, wore glasses. Had a scholarly air, she said. I see. Sister, can you get all the nurses who are off duty together for a few minutes? Yes. In the reception room of the nurse's home, if you like. Uh, do that, will you please? And Miss Thompson? Miss Young? You go along, too. All right. Come on, Tom. Hmm. Looks like we got to find a woman in this case. You know, Cherche is la femme. Yeah. A woman or a jealous sweetheart. Well, let's look through this dresser. Oh, good letter. Get a whiff of the perfume on this one. Oh. Yeah. Hammer carefully. Here's another drawer. It's in here. Say... Oh, look at this photograph with it. Boy, that's some picture. Beautiful, isn't she? Wonder who she is. Looks like a dancer. Yeah. Only I wonder why the head's cut off. I'm wondering that myself. A headless picture of a girl. And where are we going to find the original of a picture like that? I don't know. Yet. You're crazy. Tom Salmon never meant anything to me. That's a lot of fat How life. about the time you were at the painted rocks with him in the desert? And weren't you the unknown nurse in that fight at the dance hall? I've never been in a dance hall in my life. Hey, now, wait a there. minute. Wait a minute. Now, you nurses all remember one thing. A man was murdered right here in St. Mary's Hospital this morning. You've got to talk. And remember, anything you say here may be used as evidence. I don't know about the other nurses, Sheriff, but I'm ready to tell you all I know about Tom oh, Salmon. Oh, cut it out, Tom. Just Please. a minute, Miss Young. Suppose you talk, then. Well, you'll find it out sooner or later, so you might as well know now. If Tom Salmon had a middle name, it should be Romance. Were there any uh, girls Tom Salmon was particularly interested in? They may have thought so, but I never kidded myself on how much Tom really liked me. You know the woman in this photograph? No. Oh, oh, she's beautiful, all right. Never seen a photograph like that outside of anatomy class. Do any of you other nurses recognize the woman in this photograph? I don't believe Tom knew that woman. He found this picture in his dresser drawer. Does Simon know any cabaret dancers? He did know a girl who worked in a nightclub. Know a lot about him, don't you, Rosemary? I know he's been murdered, and that's more than you seem to realize. Miss Young, do you remember this dancer's name? It, it was a rather queer name. French, I think. Louise? Something like that. Lucille? Lucette Lamar? Lucelle Lafleur? Hmm, something like that. And she works in a nightclub. You're a dancer here with a French name like Lucille or Lucette? <laughs> All our dancers have a French name. Well, if you're one who looks like the girl in this picture. <laughs> Even without the head, I wish I had. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. She's a French girl, a dancer. And she looks like this picture. Sure. You bring her around and I'll give her a contract. What did you like to Is there anything wrong? No, no, no trouble, Kelly. Uh, we're doing all the nightclubs, that's yeah, all. Looking for a girl, that's all. But monsieur, why did you not say so before? Carry here, please. Take this, then. Thanks. Now... Is there anything I can do for you? Have you a dancer here, a French girl with a name like Camille Lafleur or Lucette Lamour? Or... Lucie Lamour? Mais oui, she dances here. Well, at last. Oh, we'd like to uh, talk to her after she does her act. But certainly. Well, when does she come on? Right after this tourist number. Well, enjoy yourself. Yeah, we'll enjoy ourselves, all right. Looking for a girl who maybe put two bullets through a man's head. Yeah. Have you got a picture? Yeah. This time a murder clues a headless picture of a dancer. Well, that's all we have so far. Oh, uh, here is. A message just came from Lucie Lam uh, Lamar. Saying she was sick and couldn't appear tonight. Uh, who telephoned? Lucie Lamar? No, her roommate, a Miss Jackson. Hurrah. Right. Get your motorcycle escort. Where did she go? When did she go? Did you 
you know Tom Salmon? You saw the papers today. Yes, I, I knew he was murdered this morning at St. Mary's Hospital. That's all I know. Is this Lucille's photograph? Where'd you get that picture? I'm asking the question. Is this her picture? I won't tell you. I... Oh, no, it isn't her picture. Honest, it isn't. Tell us what you know, then. She took him home last night and started packing her bag. Why? First, she was broken-hearted and sobbing. Then she was mad enough to kill somebody. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. She's still with him now. And when love really comes to a woman, it, it changes her. It, it transforms her. Into a killer? All oh, those children didn't kill Tom Sam. How could she? She left home last night. Where'd she go? San Francisco. What got her all upset last night? I don't know. She cried around about how he was the same as all the other men and that their great love was me. Hmm. Oh, Sarah, you would have felt sorry for her. She used to come home after seeing him and talk about a wedding in a home. Oh, women are all like that. This man's in bed in a hospital and somebody comes in and puts two bullets in his head. Some woman did it thinking of a cozy home in rose bushes, I suppose. What kind of a gun did she have? She didn't have a gun. Miss Jackson, you have to remain here in Tucson as a material witness, understand? Yes, sir. Come on, Bra. Let's get the teletype working. Wanted by police of Tucson, Arizona, in connection with murder of Carla Salmon in St. Mary's Hospital, August 13th. French dancer Lucille Lamar, description tall, well proportioned, weight about 130 pounds, height about 5 feet 1 inch, is located home in Wire Sheriff Walter Bailey, Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> Coroner Sergeant's report. Gun that killed Salmon with a 32 automatic. Check all pawn shops. Find out if anybody bought a 32. Hello, City Desk. Crawford. Yeah, I just got a flash from the sheriff's office in the Salmon murder. Yeah. The great lover angle again. It's an inside tip. There's a doctor at the hospital, Dr. John A. Hartford. He's secretly engaged to one of the nurses there. Mm-hmm. He found out lately that his fiance and this chief Salmon had been going out together. He's on a suspect list, but they don't know who the nurse is yet. Still checking every new clue, the authorities began the plainsman's trick, a backtracking over a cold trail, the trail of the past life of the slain Don Juan. They asked questions at tourist camps, lunch counters, hotels. How about this, sir? Yes, sir. Any for it, Wow? You're the only one in Tucson we haven't checked on. Now, well, let's get it over with. Come on. All right, all right. Never mind. Just want to ask you a few questions. What's your name? Eddie Clark. Uh, did a couple by the name of Salmon ever register here, Eddie? Salmon? Yeah, sure. What? Yeah, they stopped here. I thought you got that information before. What do you mean? When? A man came in here the other night. He said he was in headquarters. Oh, so headquarters is checking too. Wonder why they didn't tell the sheriff's office. What did he want to know? Same thing you did. Whether well, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas and Mr. Salmon ever stopped here. And did you tell him? Yes, sir. Hmm. See this photograph, Eddie? Yes. Yeah. Uh, where's your head? I don't know. Tell me, if this photograph had a head and the right clothes on, would it look like the woman who registered here as Mrs. Salmon? Well, uh, would it? Well, uh... Think. Can't you remember? Sure. What did Mrs. Salmon look like? She was a brunette. Brown eyes. In the early 20s, I'd say. How would her weight compare with the woman in this photograph? See, this Mrs. Salmon was slim. She wasn't real pretty, but... She had what I call a swell figure. Uh-huh. Would you say she was the woman in this photograph? Um, I'd say she wasn't the woman. That still doesn't let Lucy Lamar out. No, but this man from headquarters has got me. When was he here? Let me see. Uh, Tuesday. What? Tuesday? Yes. Tuesday night. Well, that was four days before Salmon was murdered. Four days before. What did this man look like? Short. Our complexion, wore glasses, neatly dressed, and... Do you remember what he was wearing? No, but he was nice about everything, that I remember. Very polite, studious kind of fellow. What you call scholarly. That's the man. Sure, the man Sister Angela described. Studious, scholarly. The mysterious caller Simon had the morning he was murdered. Get your hat, Eddie. Me? Yeah. You're coming to the hospital with us. Is this woman, Eddie? Uh, no, no, she isn't the girl. She isn't the girl. What 
girl. You keep us here in the reception room all night asking us questions. What girl are you looking for? You answer our questions. Are you engaged to a doctor? No. Who cares if I'm engaged anyway? Someone working here, jealous of you, could have known the best time to kill Sam. No one was in the corridor outside his room. I never had anything to do with Tom Salmon. Oh, let me go. All right, Miss Lloyd. Sit down. How many more, Ross? There's Parsons and Miss Thompson. If they're not out, they won't be in until 12. Can you see them in the morning? I'd like to get back to the hotel, sir. Uh, let's see. Uh, Miss Young? Yes. Either Miss Parsons or Miss Thompson or Brunette? Well, Miss Parsons is a decided blonde, and you've seen Miss Thompson. All right. You can go, Eddie. We'll meet you here tomorrow morning when these other nurses go on duty. Thank you. I'll be around. Okay. Oh, here is Thompson. Now we'll have to start all over again. They told me when I signed in if you wanted to see me in the reception room. Miss Thompson, did you see a man in the corridor outside here just now? I saw a man going around the corner just as I came in. Did he see you? Yes, yes, sir. Oh, I don't know. Thompson, answer him. Tell him. Tell him what? Why ask me? We've been all here all night answering questions. Janet, what did you tell him? Nothing. Stop staring at me. What? Why do you look at me like that? Miss Thompson, take off your hat, please. That. Hmm. Are you engaged to, uh... Janet, you have been talking. You have been saying things. Of course he has. He's told us plenty. It's not true. I haven't said a word. You have. You told him I'm married. Oh, yes, yes. We know you're married. He didn't want the hospital to know about it. It isn't true. I didn't tell him. Come on, Miss Hanson. She's engaged to Dr. Hartford. He wouldn't admit it because he didn't want her mixed up in this case. He had never even knew she went out with Tom Sam. I never did. Don't you believe her? She did. She told me so. They used to meet by the front of Texas near the hospital ground. If Dr. Hartford knew about Tom Sam, he would have killed him. Who did kill him? I don't know. Miss Thompson, why did you kill him? I didn't. What is your husband's name? Oh, what difference does it make? Don't Just a minute. I'll take that call. Hello? Who? Call me up and said he killed a man. Get this call, Trey. Hold it. Keep him on the wire. Okay, right. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll, uh, I'll get the Thompson. Uh, just hold on, will you, please? Oh, uh, Mr. Thompson. Uh, just hold on, will you? Oh, oh, oh. oh uh, I'm the, uh, new night porter, Watson. Uh, Mr. Thompson's night off, you know. They told you the trick board she'd come in. Why, she's probably coming over to the main building to the nurse's home right now. Yes, let me talk to him. Get please. away, get away. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, could I uh, have a call you? Get to leave your name or your phone number? Oh. Operator, operator. Hello, hello. Can you trace that call? This is Sheriff Daly. Yes, yes, the call. Oh, oh, oh. Whose name is the phone listed in? The phone listed in the name of George Bain. Bain. No, no. That's right. Good. Thanks. You hear that siren, Miss Thompson? It's a team, I should say. It's my men on the way to arrest your husband. You'll never get him. You'll never get him. I didn't. I killed Tom Salmon. I killed him. Is that right, Dean? Did your wife kill Tom Simon? No, I killed him. No, it's not true. Was it an accident, Dean? Accident? <laughs> did you call the sheriff's office after you killed him? Sure. He didn't kill him. I did. So, Mr. Mahershaw. Hey, Be quiet, Dean. Now, Mr. Dean, let's hear your story. I don't know why I ever did it. I was attracted to Tom Simon from the first time I saw him. It was something I couldn't seem to resist. When I was with him, something just... Oh, Tom. Can I dance with you? It's a tear at my heart. Why, darling? When I'm in your arms, I realize I'm a terrible. I don't. I don't belong here. Oh, of course you do. And when we're married, you forget George. No, no. I married George because I loved him. We're going to be happy. So I'm still training at the hospital. We won't have to keep our marriage. Do you really love him? Yes. And I always have. Oh, no, darling. 
you forget George and his books in the hospital and everything with me. This is only midsummer madness. It's only a dream. It's true, dear. Just forget everything and dance with me. I knew that night I'd have to end it. My resolutions about Tom Slavin were no good. I realized I'd have to end this this thing that was destroying my my life. So you I can't believe her. Stay quiet, Dave. Go on, Dave. So uh, I got a gun, and I went into his room here at the hospital last Saturday morning, and I killed him. I shot him twice. He looked up at me as I went out. My wife didn't kill Tom Slavin. I did. I did. Oh. Deserved to die. Come on now, calm yourself, Mr. Dean. I want your husband to tell his side of it. Go on, Dean. Sir, this man Salmon deserves all the bullets he got. He had an almost hypnotic power over women. I'll tell you the truth about that night at the band. When I got there. Oh, that couple in the middle of the floor. Oh, some dancing, eh? Please, go away. My, my. Big handsome man taking Sunny Blade's chin away from him, huh? Better take your glasses off, Sunny. Get out of my way. Look here, Simon. You can't dance with this girl like that. Yeah. <laughs> go on home and read your book. It's all right for you to dance with her, but don't hug her like an ape. Why, you little girl. Yeah, we like to dance this way. And we're going to dance this way. If that's the way you feel about it, you better come home with me now. Take off your glasses, you stand. I don't need to. Yes, George. It's true. It's true. What are you going to do with me? Sam and I'm thinking of Tom. Oh, I wish I'd never seen him. I wish I were dead. What happened then, Dean? Sheriff, I had a right to kill that man. I hated him. I kept thinking about him. I knew when he was ordered to bed at the hospital. Last Saturday morning, I went to a pawn shop and bought a gun. What kind? 32. The man showed me how to use it. I took a taxi to St. Mary's Hospital. Just at the switchboard told me how to get to room 114. I walked right in. I went down the corridor. George Bean. No, I... What are you going to do with that gun? I'm going to kill you, son. Where well, you're going, you can't steal any more wives. Don't. Don't. Have you anything to say? Don't. Please don't. They, they'll hang you if you kill me. The law. There is no law for this, Simon. This is the unwritten law. <laughs> 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 of the jury. As judge in this court, let me say one final word before you retire to find your verdict. The era of a six shooter is gone. If we are to set free every man who shoots his way out of a domestic triangle, we are only encouraging murder. Citizens must realize that the courts and not bullets will settle these entanglements. No man has the right to take the life of another. The jury will now retire. Hello, hello, city desk. Here's the flash on the Bean verdict. Guilty. George Bean sentenced to serve from 25 to 40 years in Arizona State Penitentiary. <laughs> the story you have just heard is Love Friends to Killer. Horror in a Hospital War. Taken from the new True Detective Mysteries magazine, electrically transcribed by Transamerica. Uh-huh.